Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video we're talking about the Day 29 episode of Praxis Prepper Alien Invasion. We're going to talk about some of the discussion points and topics brought up in the episode, and at the very end I'm going to share with you a sneak peek of what's happening next time on the series. And I'll just give you a heads up, what's happening next time on the series is the final episode of the first season. Alien Invasion is going to come back in a second season, but we're going to, this is like the finale episode for the first season. It has a really super special guest star, special to me, because they were kind of, uh, uh, instrumental in me kind of even wanting to start my own this whole channel and everything the Praxis channel uh, I was a fan of this other person's channel and I was thinking you know I, I think I would like to do that too so like the fact that this person who was an inspiration to me uh, you know was interested in coming on board and you know being the, the guest star anyway you'll get to see who it is I'm excited about it I hope you're excited about it too uh, but before any of that if you haven't even seen the day 29 episode here's a link somewhere you can click on it and find out what we're talking about before we talk about it wait a moment Okay, and we'll jump right in, but first I want to make sure that I thank a couple people who made today's episode possible and really my entire channel possible to continue doing it at this higher level of quality. If you're not familiar, the only reason I'm able to do these kind of episodes that are, you know, they take more time. I mean, the, the Alien Invasion episodes themselves take like upwards of 20 hours to put together, uh, you know, each one of these things with the companion uh, video that I'm doing right now and everything. I mean, I really should be chopping firewood, but, I'm, you know, I'm doing this. You know, it takes time out of my day, and I couldn't take that time out of the day if I, you know, didn't have help from people just like yourself who have gone to patreon.com slash praxis prepper and for as little as like a dollar a month are just helping me to free up some free time to do this for you guys. And the two people that I wanted to thank, uh, you know, this week for helping out with that are Celine and Brian. Thank you very much. Not only are they giving themselves, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, the good feeling of knowing that they're helping out with the channel, they also give themselves guaranteed 100% access to all the Alien Invasion episodes. So far, we haven't had to hold back any of the episodes, but we're always riding really close to, to the funding threshold level. And if we ever drop below that funding threshold level, the deal is, is that the episodes only go out to Patreon people. Uh, you know, it's just kind of the way that I set it up to kind of like motivate people to help <laughs> because it, you know it, it takes you know all of us to put these things together in addition to that they also get access to behind the scenes content and other ways of interacting with the channel in general in fact we just finished up on patreon a big thing voting and decision making brainstorming creative idea you know generation for the next series that's coming out like I said alien invasion is coming back in a second season but first we're going to be doing devil's countdown which is a new series based on a uh, emergency homestead creation. Uh, it's kind of like this episode, except it's not just like a stick shelter. It's like, you know, a real homestead. And that's going to be coming up next year, and there are a lot of creative decisions going into that and everything. We, you know, just wrap that up, but there's always things going on at the Patreon side where you have an opportunity to really engage with this channel. So, thank you to Celine and Brian for, you know, jumping on board, doing all that kind of stuff, and, you know, if you're interested in joining them, patreon.com slash praxisprepper, you can join the team. All right, let's talk about this this episode, day 29. And in this episode, we're talking about shelter creation. Just, you know, not like a huge homestead, but like, you know, just a basic kind of shelter. And the, the key point that I wanted to bring up in this one is just the idea of, you know, actually getting out and doing stuff and finding out what's out in your environment. Because depending on your environment, you, you would want to do a slightly kind of different shelter or maybe a majorly different shelter. In here, around here in New England, we've got lots of trees, we got lots of leaves, we got lots of rocks, we got snow oftentimes. So, uh, you know, those are the assets that I have available to me. So that's what I chose to use. If you live in a different place, you'd be using different assets. But what I want to really stress is the idea of actually getting out and trying this stuff. Uh, you know, there's a behind the scenes uh, clip uh, that I, I'm not sure if I've released it yet or not, but it will be coming out where you see that it's not just me putting the shelter together, though in the series I cheat and pretend I did it all by myself. I went out and, you know, River, my six year old boy, who's going to be seven soon. Uh, we went out and we did it together. Kids love building shelters, especially if you call it a fort. You get out there, we're going to do a fort. It's very exciting and it's not only great exercise, great family time, uh, but it is really educational because if you ever needed to create a shelter for yourself, there are all sorts of things that might not be immediately obvious when you're out in the landscape. For example, uh, in the landscape around here, we have lots of hemlock. Actually, this is a big pile of hemlock behind me right now. Uh, we've got lots of birch, we've got maple, we've got oak trees, we've got poplar. Some of those trees are pretty easy to chop down just with a machete like I'm doing in this episode. Some of those trees are kind of a pain in the butt, like the poplar and oak. 
those are really hard woods, whereas like a hemlock or a birch or something like that, you can cut through really easily. And you don't necessarily know that kind of thing unless you get out and you really practice with the assets that you have available to you. Also, how big of a log can you lift up? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's great to think, oh, you know, I'm gonna do this log cabin thing, you know, and we'll be, you know, in this great situation. But it's like, honestly, especially after you've cut something down, it's still full of water, it's still, you know, wet green wood. How big of a log can, can you lift up? It's good to find that kind of stuff out not in the middle of an emergency. So that's why I would encourage you, get out there, try this stuff, experiment. I mean, don't go cutting down trees like at the city park, you know, <laughs> go someplace where it's cool to do that kind of stuff, or maybe you're not doing trees. Whatever you're gonna do, practice it. Get out there, see, what, uh, see what's easy, see what works really well, and get a sense of that stuff before you really need the stuff for a survival situation. So that's it. I'd love to hear any stories that you have of, you know, situations where you maybe bit off a little more than you could chew, you know, trying to do something like that, or, you know, situations where you learned something that, that, you know, wasn't really obvious to you. You got out there, you tried to put something together, a bridge even, you know, it doesn't have to be a shelter, a bridge, I don't know, what else do you build out, uh, you know, a tree fort, tree house, I don't know, anything where it's like things were more difficult than you anticipated them being. So let's uh, go to the, the clip of the, the last episode of the whole season. By the way, I wanna thank everyone for being with me for this whole, uh, this whole series. This idea was, uh, it was brought up by, uh, you know, some experiences that I had with other people's channels that had done like audio books and things. There were some uh, people that really encouraged me to, to do this series. I, I think Savage Survival was, uh, was a big person that was like, you know, dude, you need to get out there and, and just, you know, put this thing together. In fact, it was Savage Survival that said, you know, do a Patreon page, people will support you. They'll, they'll enjoy this kind of stuff. So I wanna thank everyone that stuck with me through this whole series, um, all the great comments uh, and everything. And well, I'm, I'm acting like this is the final, uh, the final, final episode, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm already kind of nostalgic about it because you know we're coming to the end. Uh, this is the last month that we're gonna have this first se uh, season. And you know, like I said, season two is coming back uh, and everything, but th this first season has been really special to me. It's been a really, uh, it's been a growth experience for me doing this as well because I'm not an actor, but I feel like I've gotten kind of slightly better at it through 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 this whole thing. And um, you know, I appreciate people like you know being with me through the whole thing. And uh, you know, the, the great comments I've learned a lot. I, I know a lot of other people have learned a lot. And um, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Here's the last episode, uh, a clip of the last episode, and it, it should be coming up on the third Friday of the month. Hopefully, hopefully we can release it. I, I kind of would not want for the series to go out with a whimper. I want it to go out with a bang. That's T.S. Eliot, right? Right? This is how the world ends. Not with a... I forget the quote. I don't remember the quote. Not with a bang, but with a whimper. I don't know. It'd be preferable to not go out with a whimper. So <laughs> if we can get to full funding and keep it there, that would be sweet. That's it. Thanks for watching. You know, as all of us preppers may be thinking that we were a lot more prepared than we really were for all this. I, uh, when I was watching it, I, I did not necessarily think that it was applying to me directly. Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today I want to talk about the difference between theory and reality when it comes to imagining yourself. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.